another synergy that's Max, Peter, and Jared, and we're gonna take you on a tour of our Alphonse site. So when we started this site, the original plan was to build 10 of these on this site, and as we progressed, we built them out, and we're operating them that could be improved on, so as we built out the site further and further and further, we implemented these improvements throughout the site. The way this is designed is there's filtered air intake on the right side, sucks in air and brings it into upstairs containers through ducting which is inside so we had some issues with this because we had some hot air mixing in with the intake which limited the maximum operating temperature that we could run that comfortably so we just took all these things learned from them and like, improved on the design moving forward so we'll check that out in pod three so this is pod three this so everything we learned from pods one and two we implemented it in this build out so we've taken out all of the twists and turns and the ducting and uh, placed all of our electrical gear outside for easier maintenance and access. So here what you see is the black mesh in front, that's the air intake. So air comes in there, goes through the miner rack and then gets exhausted straight out the top. In the winter you have to reheat your incoming air to make sure your, your miners don't see very cold temperatures. So that's what the ducting is that you see come down back into the intake. That's reheated air that gets mixed into the intake. After building this out, we did a cost comparison of how much it costs to build out in, uh, using containers versus building out using buildings. So over here is the next generation where we copied the overall design, but we put it into buildings. And this is the next generation. So the reheat mechanism in the building is set up similarly to how pod 3 is set up where hot air comes in from the top and comes into the filter bank. So in the hot aisle there are louvered doors that swing open when the exhaust fans are ramped down which back pressures the hot aisle and sends hot air down into the filter banks. In the filter banks at the very top there are small uh, reheat fans that kick on and they're not meant to move air, they're meant to create turbulence and encourage hot air to mix with the cold incoming air so you get a more even temperature distribution throughout the rack. In the building all of the exhaust fans are set on VFD so they're variable speed drives. As the exhaust fans speed up in the summer uh, when it's hotter, those louver doors are get sucked shut which prevents any reading from going on in the summer. We're at the Iris Energy substation for our 30 megawatt site in Canal Flats. Behind me we have T1 Transformer. It's a 7.5 to 9.35 MVA transformer that takes the voltage from 69 kV down to 12.5. On the other side we have T2 Transformer that is a 22.5 to 27.5 MVA transformer. These transformers feed through reclosers and send power out to our data center in the pod yard. That feeds in through a CV1 circuit breaker and distributed on a bus system to T1 and T2 transformers. So this substation is built out to handle 30 megawatts right now. Recently, we have installed two capacitor banks here. Our power factor without them is very close to unity anyways and with them we have unity power factor on site in our flats. 12 megawatt building we take 12.5 kV, step it down to 600 volt. From there we go 600 volt over to dry core transformers we get 460, 240 and we distribute it through the cable trade system into the data center into our racks, to our PDUs. This is a far more superior system than what we've done in the past with the pods. Uh, a lot more efficient and cost effective. This is our Canal Flats Fabrication Facility. It is 350 feet long by 45 feet wide. And we gutted the entire building from top to bottom, installed all new electrical, three overhead cranes that span the whole length of the fabrication shop. Our Canal Flats site is fenced all the way around with ram through fencing and gates. It is 24 hour surveillance and has 24 hour security on site. This shop takes care of all the fabrication for our North American sites and all the ones we are currently deploying to. Everything that we are able to build ourselves is built on site here.
So one of the added benefits that we have about owning our own fabrication shop here in BC is we don't have to wait on any outside contractors or suppliers to fabricate all of the components that we use in our builds.